You may have seen this meme. Never in the history of calming down has anyone calmed down by being told to calm down. So why is that? Well, it's because when we're stressed out, our limbic system is kind of running the show. So this is the deeper, older, emotional brain. And its purpose is to keep us safe from threats and help us connect to others and a whole bunch of other really important things. But this part of our brain is not where conscious or logical thinking happens. That stuff all happens in the cortex, the younger, logical and rational brain. And these two parts of the brain, when they're stressed out, it's like a bad breakup. Like they aren't really talking to each other very well. So that's why it's pretty hard to calm yourself down or to relax by just thinking that you need to relax. That usually just makes things worse. But that doesn't mean that we can't train ourselves to calm down. We just have to come in through a different approach. And that's from a body based approach. The limbic system is also called the mammal brain. So if you imagine a mama bear who can go through all the emotions, like she's happy when she finds some honey, or she's furious when she sees something that threatens her cubs, or she's sweet when she sniffs and licks her little babies. All of these emotions are associated with her senses, smell, taste, sight, or touch. And that's how the limbic or mammalian part of our brain works. It relies on our senses to determine whether we're safe or we're in danger. So one of the ways that we can signal to our brain that we're safe, that it's okay to calm down, is by making a sensory toolkit. A sensory toolkit is a, a, like a little collection of physical objects that can help you come to your senses and get recentered, to get grounded and to calm yourself down. So let's talk about a couple of things that you can add to yours. So let's start with smell because smell is so powerful and it's really closely associated with emotion and memory. So start by choosing a couple of scents that you love or that are really calming for you and you can keep those near you. So this could be something like um, a scented lotion or um, an essential oil. You can use like a little necklace diffuser or, um, you know, carry the oil around with you. Uh, you could also, you know, use a perfume that you really like or uh, any other scent that you really like. So I'm not big into essential oils, but I do really like this balance blend. Um, these are not sponsors, uh, but I think it smells nice and makes me feel a little better. Hmm. Okay. Now let's move to touch. Um, one thing you could do is take a self care day and go to the fabric store and just like run your hands along all the different types of fabric. Uh, you know, which one speaks to you? Which one do you love? You could carry a piece of satin or whatever fabric it is in your pocket or in your purse. Now I am not really into fabric, like that's not my touch calming thingy, um, but I do like stones a lot. So like this is a stone I found out in the desert and I love the desert. So I've got a lot of stones that I like and um, every once in a while I'll carry one around or I'll rub it and that can help remind me to stay grounded. Okay, let's talk about taste. Now it's a good idea to be a little bit careful with this one. We want to look out for emotional eating. Um, and so that's not something I'm encouraging you like, oh, if you're emotional, just go eat, you know, a gallon of ice cream. But um, something that gives you like a little sip or just a little taste of something soothing, like a sip of tea or a little mint, like those can all be helpful to get you kind of recentered and back to the moment. Sometimes after a tough therapy group session, I'll share a little bit of chocolate with all the participants. And you know, that just helps them, I think, associate a little bit of joy with the difficult work that they're doing. Okay, let's talk about sight. Um, what can you look at that calms you? I mean, one of the best things is just noticing the room that you're in, looking around and noticing that you're in a safe place. And again, this is speaking to your mammal brain, right? You think about that mama bear who's scanning her environment for dangers. And when you scan your environment and you realize you're safe, that triggers your limbic brain to be like, oh cool, we're good. Maybe it's a painting of a religious figure or it's a photo of someone you love. Um, you, could, you could make a little photo collection on your phone of pictures to look at that help you feel safe and calm. Um, and you can also use mental imagery to bring something calming to mind. So when I worked in the wilderness with troubled youth and sometimes I'd get really stressed out because we had eight day shifts with these kind of difficult teenagers. Anyway, when I'd get stressed out, I'd just grab a handful of sagebrush and I'd smell it or I'd, I'd look at the blue sky to get centered. And, and those were some of the sensory grounding techniques that I would use to help me calm down. Okay, now let's talk about sound. What kind of sounds make you feel safe? 
Is it white noise or running water, birds chirping, or complete silence? What kind of music makes you feel safe? You could choose a couple of go-to songs that help you remember that you are safe and they bring to mind that sense of peace and security in your life. So take a minute right now to write a list of the things that you may find soothing in each of these categories. Then go out and explore. Take some time each day to experiment with your five senses. You could start a little note in your phone uh, where you write down what helps you calm down and relax. And you could carry these things around in your backpack or your purse or your wallet or whatever. And you can use them to help you when you need them. Anyways, I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for spending a few minutes of your precious life with me and take care.